Shari here today and I'm going to be making a card that I made many years ago so I'm revisiting a very old card that I've made. This is sort of a Valentine's Day card but I'm going to be using some sets that are not for Valentine's so I'm going to be using Cozy Christmas, Love You S'more, and the little stars from Upon a Star and I'm also going to be using Smitty's ABCs to make a custom sentiment. So to start out, I'm going to create my starry sky, and I'm going to use some Distress Oxides to blend my sky. I'm using Wilted Violet, and I'm starting not at the very bottom, because the very bottom is going to be covered up by some green cardstock that is my grass. So I'm kind of starting a third of the way up with the Wilted Violet, and then I'm going to go in with Blueprint Sketch and Chip Sapphire. So I'm just going to go back and forth between the colors and I've sped this up here because it took me a while to put these on there because I was trying to go in with a lighter hand. I'm usually pretty heavy with my ink and I'm trying to be a little better about that. But you'll see when I put down one color I'll go back to the color I did before and try to blend that line a little bit. I'm doing chip sapphire towards the top and I'm not going to do too terribly much of it just to make nice dark sky at the top. And then I'm going to go back in and blend out those lines. And I decided that I wanted it just slightly darker at the top so now I'm going in with some black soot and just doing the very edges. Now to create my stars I'm going to use some starry watercolors here. And I'm going to use a couple different colors of these golds. So I've just got my watercolors nice and juicy with a lot of water in there. I'm just picking it up with my brush, and you can see I'm just tapping it and flicking it. Now I got that first one pretty wet, so I got some nice big stars out of that. This one I'm using a little less water, and I'm going to get some smaller speckles. And then finally, I decided to go in with the white and just add a few more very small flecks in the background. So you can make this as starry as you want just by adding as little or as much of the metallic watercolor. So I set that aside to dry and I decided I was going to work on my images here. So I'm going to have a little fire and then I'm going to take this cup of milk and turn it into a marshmallow. And I'm actually going to show you two different ways to do this. And I used the one that made a shorter marshmallow in my card, but you can also use the entire height of the cup to make kind of a tall marshmallow. And I realize there are marshmallows in the Love You S'more set, but I like the smiley face and the little hands and arms on this guy. So basically we want to eliminate the little waves of the milk, I guess that's in the cup. So the first way I'm going to do this is to make my short marshmallow. So I'm just going to ink it up to the line of the milk. So you can see that I'm not inking above that milk line. And I'm just using my finger to get off any that I might have gotten on that line. Or I'm using my chamois here. But when I use my chamois I do like to kind of go over it with my thumb to make sure there's no water on there because that will also leave a mark on the paper. So you can see there he's kind of open-ended at the top. And I'll finish him off here in a little bit with a Copic Multiliner pen. The other way you can do that if you don't have confidence in your drawing of his top, the top of his head, you can ink up the whole glass of milk. You can carefully wipe away the ink that is on the line of the milk. And like I said, I do like to touch it with my finger too and get off any moisture that's left behind from the chamois. So you can see there I've got two options and I'll finish the other guy off here in a minute. I'm using the moon from Love You S'more and then the star from Upon a Star. So I'm just going to do some very simple Copic coloring here. I'm going to color my little fire with a few shades of orange. I'm starting with my lightest. I'll move on to my medium and I'm just going to do flecks. Flicks of my marker up from the bottom, not flex, flicks. <laughs> so instead of like going round and round and trying to blend, I'm I'm keeping my marker strokes in there. And then I'm going to go in with my darkest color and just do the bottom. I'm going to color in the log that he's sitting on here. I'm going to use a lighter color for the end. And then I'll use a darker color for the side and I'll just 
use that same color to create my shading. So this is the same color I first put down. I'm just adding more to create some darker spaces. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of the darker in at the bottom. And then right under him to create a shadow like he's sitting on the log. I'm going to do some simple coloring with my stars and my moon. I'm just going in with a nice yellow. And then I'm going to take a yellow that's slightly darker and kind of outline within the inside of my image to just kind of give the edge of it a little bit darker tone. And we can blend that out with the original color as well. So now I have my Copic Multiliner pen and I'm just going to give this little short marshmallow guy a top just like the glass of milk. So now I can use the dies that match all these to cut them out, and then I'll just trim off the top. I'm just going in with a very light brown, which is this E triple zero, I think, just to make them not quite so white, give them a little bit of shading. So I've got all my pieces cut out here. I used my dies, and you can see there my little short marshmallow guy. I cut him out with the die that matches, and now I can just take my scissors and trim off the top. So I'm going to fake it as if he had a die that fit him perfectly. So I'm going to make a card base out of Narwhal cardstock here. And this is a top folding card. I'm just using my Teflon bone folder to score it and make a nice crease. And then I'm going to take my panel that I've inked and I'm going to cut it with the larges of the outside in stitch rectangle. So this will give me a nice thin border of that gray cardstock behind and a nice finished edge to my inked panel. So I'm going to place these here just to kind of get placement of where I want my pieces. And then this will help me figure out where to cut the grass. So actually what I decided I needed to do first is um, stamp my sentiment and then cut the grass. That way I don't crowd my sentiment too close to the bottom. So I've already put these on a block and I'm going to have two lines and I've actually mounted them separately so that I can stamp the bottom one and then the one above it without having to move around the smaller line to get it centered with the one above like shifting it on the block I think it's just easier to stamp one line and then the other and center it that way so I'm going to use my powder tool here my anti-static tool because I'm going to do some white embossing so I've got my clear embossing ink and I've got my white embossing powder and I'm going to start at the bottom and work my way up so this way I get my spacing right so this just says, with you. And I'm going to go ahead and add my powder to it while it's nice and sticky. I'm not going to heat it up just yet. I'm going to go ahead and stamp the line above it before I do that. So this one, I'm going to have to steal back my W, or my U, sorry, because I didn't have enough U's. So this line says, under the stars. So I'm just going to add my powder to that line. And then I can go in with a paintbrush and I'm just going to knock off. There's a little bit of white powder that stayed on at the top. So I just got rid of that so I don't have any white speckles. And then I'm going to heat it up with my heat tool and melt that embossing powder. So now I have a nice bright white sentiment. So now I can kind of put my little characters where I want them spaced above my sentiment. And now I can see where I want to cut the grass. So you can see how your spacing can be figured out a little better if you stamp stuff first and then cut. If I had cut my grass too low, I would have crowded those letters a little bit. So I'm just going to hold that in place with some washi tape and run it through my die cut machine. And now that it is cut with that nice grassy top, I can add it to the bottom of my panel here and cover up the white. So now you can see that beautiful sky coming up from that grass.
I'm putting some foam tape on the back and I covered this panel very well and now I'm going to put it on my card. So I'm going to pop it up from the card base just a little bit. Gives it some nice interest and makes it not so flat. And I cover the back with a lot of foam tape so that I don't get any sagging. Now I can start to place my pieces and I'm using some black foam squares here just because this has a nice dark background and I thought that this was a good opportunity to, to use those black foam squares. So I'm popping up the little fire sitting on the log and my little marshmallow I created. I decided to add some rosy cheeks to my marshmallow just to give him a little bit more color. And then I'm also popping up the moon and the stars and I actually used the thinner um, adhesive squares for these so they're not popped up quite as much as the fire and the marshmallow. Then as a final touch I'm going in with a gold metallic pin and I'm just adding some little drawn strings so it's almost like my little moon and my stars are hanging from the top like I created this little scene almost like it is a set on a play which I just think is a cute detail. So now to finish it off, I obviously need to complete my sentiment. So it's going to say, under the stars with you is where I want to be. So I'm just taking my Smitty's ABCs, lining them up on, on my block. And this time I'm actually going to stamp the first line first. And I am having to reuse the W. So you saw that I kind of pulled it off and moved it. But that left a space perfect for that one W and I'll go back and stamp that one letter. So now I can take that one W and you can see that it's left the spacing perfect. I can just stamp it at the beginning of the word where. And now to finish it off, to B and that little solid heart is from the Love You S'more set. So here is my finished card with that continuation of the sentiment on the inside. This is actually one of my favorite cards that I've made. And it was nice to revisit an old card and remake it using some new techniques and things that I've learned. Thanks for watching. Have an amazing day. Bye.